thank you very much. And I too would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land upon which we gather tonight and pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging. Uh, I certainly thank the organisers of tonight's forum. Uh, I acknowledge my fellow panellists, Asha Judah and Sue Pennicu, parliamentary uh, colleagues in the audience, uh, councillors and candidates, including my friend Serena Grasso, the Labor candidate for Caulfield. Uh, I was at this uh, forum uh, four years ago, um, and I'm pleased to be uh, returning four years later as the uh, member for Bentley in the Andrews Labor government. Uh, four years ago, I spoke about three uh, main uh, election commitments that we will build the Metro Rail Tunnel, that we would remove 50 level crossings, and that we would leverage this massive investment to create jobs and opportunities for Victorians. Four years ago, uh, those were election promises, uh, but four years on, they have been handsomely honoured. The Metro Rail Tunnel is Victoria's uh, biggest ever public transport project. It is a game changer. Uh, when it comes to delivering uh, the modern, reliable rail service that we see in the other great cities of the world. It is going to create for us five new stations, including some very important connections to the University of Melbourne and the hospital precinct uh, at Parkville. It is going to add capacity uh, by untangling the knot um, in the uh, city loop. And locally, in our community, what that means is more trains, more often. It's as simple as that. And we're going to achieve this by sending the Dandenong line uh, through the Metro Tunnel and the Frankston line uh, through the City Loop. And when you consider not just the tunnel, but the associated network improvements, including the upgrade to Caulfield Junction, uh, including the signalling between Caulfield and Richmond, we will be able to deliver a vastly better uh, system uh, that will be more reliable, uh, that will be more frequent, that will be modern, and our city deserves no less. We promised at the last election that we would remove 50 level crossings, 20 in our first term. Uh, we have well and truly exceeded that commitment. Uh, to date, we have removed, to date, we have removed 26 level crossings, uh, it will be 29 by year's end. Uh, at the uh, last election, we promised to remove the Liberal crossings at Bentley, McKinnon and Ormond. Uh, when I was door knocking uh, during that campaign, people doubted that we would get that job done. But indeed, we did get that job done and recently we celebrated the second anniversary uh, of our brand new stations. Uh, we have also this year removed nine level crossings on the Dandenong line. Uh, that is an important project that we pursue proudly and strongly in the face of an unprecedented negative campaign uh, by the uh, state opposition. But we persevered because this was an important thing to do. The boom gates uh, on the Franston line were down around 40 minutes in the morning peak. The boom gates on the Dandenong line were down around 88 minutes uh, in the morning peak. Um, we wasted no time um, in getting rid of these level crossings and uh, we are very proud of it. Now, any government with a social conscience uh, will at the same time that they're investing in infrastructure uh, also invest um, and leverage that investment uh, in making sure that Victorians have jobs and opportunities. Uh, our transport projects are creating thousands upon thousands of jobs, uh, but they are also creating opportunities for Victorians who need them. Uh, that is uh, why, under this government, uh, it is the law of the land that government projects carry significant local content requirements. Uh, that, is, that is why, uh, under uh, our government, uh, the level crossing removals included 100% Aussie steel. Uh, it is why, under this government, our 65 new high-capacity trains are being built right here in Victoria 
uh, creating jobs for Victorians. They will run on the Dan Long line and they're not going to be built overseas, which is where the former government uh, wanted to build them. Uh, that is why uh, it is the law of the land today uh, that 10%, uh, a minimum of 10% of all uh, labour hours on government projects need to be completed by apprentices, trainees or engineering groups. And it is why on the elevated railway line, uh, on the, uh, the Dandenong line, uh, uh, 100 Indigenous Australians and around 30 return service people worked on that line. That is more and more people uh, getting the dignity um, of work and a life uh, that is fulfilling uh, for them and we have been uh, uh, very, very strong on that and that is something that I am immensely proud of. Now, can I say, um, I've been in public life, I'm only 32, but I've been in public life a, a long time. Uh, I was uh, elected to the City of Glenara when I was 19 and when you are in public life, uh, there, you know, there, there are certain consistencies in, in terms of your policy interests and one consistency uh, in my time in public life has been in making sure that we prevent people from becoming uh, isolated from their communities and transport is key to that. Mobility uh, is, key, is key to that. It's not just about getting to work or getting to school, it is also about giving people their independence, particularly older people their independence. Uh, a couple of years ago I got a call uh, at my office from a 90 year old lady, her name is Doris Giles, she lives at the Classic Residences Retirement Village in Bentley and her main complaint uh, was that there was no easy access to public transport from her retirement village despite nearly 500 people uh, living there. Uh, well, she lobbied me, she said she wouldn't stop ringing me until I got something done about it. Uh, I lobbied the Minister and today uh, there is a bus that picks them up uh, from outside their retirement village and takes them direct to Southland uh, and uh, uh, to local train stations. So it wasn't, it wasn't a big change but it was one that has meant uh, a lot uh, to 500 older people. Um, that is the way I've approached advocacy when it comes to buses. Uh, we have also extended uh, the 703 bus service uh, to, um, uh, to Middle Brighton on Sundays. Uh, in this budget we included a brand new bus route to run from Moorabbin Station to Chadston Shopping Centre via Tucker Road and East Boundary Road. That goes to tender in just a couple of weeks. This is the momentum we have in Victoria now. If you give us another term, that is going to continue. Thank you very much. <laughs>